Well, I have some good news and I have some bad news for you. Cue the fire. What do you want first? You want the good news? Well, um, the entire system is fixed. So you can go back to whatever you were doing four years ago, put all your digits back into that little bank. Janet solved it and Jerome solved it like a flip of a switch. Actually, I, I'm, I'm a terrible liar. Just ask my wife. I cannot get away with anything. No, oh, but just in case you want to know who's a better liar, well, that would be uh, everyone in the government. And actually, Janet, you should probably start lying, okay? Don't go, oh, no, we're not going to do any of that. Uh, that is a great way to cause the entire system to collapse, which she did yesterday, which she needs to learn how to lie better. If you're a politician, you got to be good at it or you got to redirect. Fifth Amendment on that one. J.P. Morgan says you right there. See, J.P. Morgan's like, we got all the deposits. We're fine. 1.1 trillion. That's a lot of money. Has exited. That means gone. It got moved. And that is what I've been warning you and telling you to do probably for the last, yeah, maybe two years. Exited the most vulnerable banks, but they solved it. And I say, how do you solve this? Cue the fire again. Look at this. You have, <laughs> this is just crazy. You can't solve it, you guys, okay? So you better be holding assets. I don't care what it is, but you better be holding it. Because as my gold and silver friends, which I'm gonna go over a gold chart with you, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. And look at these deposits. Set, can I round up 18 trillion? in in digits that would not be that would not be this i know you want to say that you, you have this in your account you don't there's only billions all right not not trillions it's a it is a whole lot different there is none of that paper in there 17 or 18 trillion of your money is not in the bank it's in the bond market sorry about that or it's over there on fed's balance sheet or it's in a money market fund that would be Two trillion, over over two trillion. And if the Fed wants to fix this, they need to stop doing that. Because th actually their whole balance sheet's upside down. But anyways, that would be for another video. Maybe I'll squeeze it in on you. You have the FDIC. It's a, a, a company, a corporation. Deposit insurance fund of 128 billion. 128 billion uh, and your 18 trillion. And let me just give this a visual representation. Okay, see, I'm gonna leave a, a little red dot right there, okay? There's, uh, there's 120 billion. The rest of the screen is 18 trillion. I don't think that this is going to fix all of this, no. Especially if you go and you say, you know what, I think, uh, I, think I wanna take my money. Don't do that. Number one, they don't have it. Number two, they'll make it illegal. That's just they, every every way they can solve this. That's what they'll do. You want to take paper out? Oh, there's a virus on it. Can't have that. Uh, no, it's it'll they'll make it illegal. You cannot take it. We're going digital now. Oh, do, hey, does anyone have a, a solution for a digital currency? Nope, n nothing, nothing here. Oh, and just to let you know, back to the story and back to uh, the people that are in charge. You got to boot Janet and Jerome out. This is just. Uh, this is a joke. Well, it's, I mean, it's good for pff, YouTube. I mean, the things that were coming out of her mouth, yelling, not time yet to say if FDIC insurance cap appropriate. <laughs> well, incomplete sentence, but uh, it's Janet, it's not, Yell, yelling. Uh, situations like run on SVB may more readily, <laughs> just, this is what she said, may more readily happen in the future. Oh, great. Regulations may need rethinking. Okay, Janet, well, thank you for the confidence. Yellen, deposits left SVB at pace that was not seen before. I mean, this is like someone who's learned English for the first time. Never seen this before. We have never seen deposits flee at the pace they were withdrawn from. Huh, what do we do? So just in case you thought 1.1 trillion on the Ides of March, always that day, always Ides of March, March 15th, that's Caesar died. And my mom passed on that day. I know, I know, I'm not, you feel sorry for Bravo. It's just a date that sticks in my head. And since we're all family and friends here, I can share these things. But Janet, what are you doing? Just come out and lie. Just tell everyone 
that their money is secured right in the banking system. Even though I have videos of people, for FDIC, you know, you may have seen it, gather around a table, they're like, man, if, if this ever goes down, we're running. You know, I think I need to meet with these guys, Janet and Jerome. Jerome, just tell people that you can print money. Just keep doing that. The people will believe you. Janet, just tell tell everyone FDIC is is a government agency. They have the money. It's it's next to the vault that stores all the gold. And if you ever want to look at it, we can't show you because it's of interest to the government. It could cause fear, but just know it is there. But what I've been telling you about for a while of this over one trillion, half, eh? Where'd it go? Government money market funds. Yes. You go to your bank and you say, you know what? That money market thing, yes. Move it over to that 2.1 trillion, right? Get it out of the banking system and move it into an insolvent government or an insolvent Fed or a treasury that is begging, please raise the debt ceiling. This whole thing is going to go down like the Titanic or the dollar, which is not, we are not expanding the monetary base. It's contracting. But just in case you wanna see a chart of people moving their money, this is the overnight reverse repurchase agreements, also known as repo. And people are like, look, look, the Fed's going burr. No, no, those are your deposits. Gosh, no one understands how this system works. It's your deposits at your bank and your bank moves them. They wanna buy bonds, they, that's, that's, that's their goal, either mortgage-backed securities, bonds, or loans. But eh, no one's going for the loan game right now. But you guys and everyone, they're moving it over into repo. Looks like we're at about 2.4 trillion. I was 2.2. Ah, I'm just rounding. And there are so many things that you guys can do with your digits rather than just... Because if you put it in the bank, they, they already move it. So why don't you beat them to it? Put it in the bank and then move it. Do a bond. Do a money market. Do a C nah, CD's not paying very much. Do the bond. You, you call them up. Yeah, I'd like a six month, uh, not financial advice. This is what your, you know, whatever. Your bankster will tell you. Uh, six month, you're paying you 4.5. I locked in that five and I even got above five, but now it's, it's dropping, but it is secured, kind of. I mean, actually on a one year, I mean, you're getting four and a half percent. Come on. It's better than just it sitting there. Or yes, you can own physical. I got to get, I got to bring my coin. This is silver. I, I got to bring out some gold. You can own physical, you, you hold it, gold, silver, Bitcoin, right? But, and then you paper trade this stuff where you, you, you swing trade it. We say paper trade because I cannot give financial advice, but your gold trade, and I'm going to show it to you and we're going to, I'll show you the S&P 500. That, oh, also I have the, the nine count on, which you, you're above it. You're 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 moving too high. You, you need to pull back in gold. And usually the pullbacks, like this last one. Look, look, look. See, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. See the nine? Hey, you didn't pull back. Now you're you're, you're pink. You're starting to to twist it, right? Now you're like, oh, they're pink, right? Keep going. It's not it's not stink, and it goes all the way up. It's gonna pull back harder, which it did. You see, nice run, pull back harder. You get back in. This is the Bravo nine right there and for all you guys are like oh my gosh this stuff works you're welcome i don't know why i mean i do know why which i go into detail in the course but right there you turn on the little bravo nine and if you try to search for it i'm sorry I, you know what i need to create it but it's just the nine day moving average and boom you're in and you write it but now right now you're taking profit and yes we could continue to run up but you have probabilities that we run down but if you're holding this is not a t this is not the time you should be going out and buying physical. It's just, you wait for a pullback, right? You want it cheap. And actually for those of you that wanted to know, like, well, when do we, I have a link in the description on my, it's in my bear market and my swing trading course. And also you can get all my courses together for $199, four payments, you get everything. You get to be smart. You turn on this, this little green, green thing and it'll say, this is a bottom. This is where you should be accumulating. And then you learn about that little pattern, a falling wedge and where it's going to break. There's all of these things, but this is not your accumulation. Also, something else you need to be aware of, you are at a topping pattern. One, two, three. Now I said, yes, if, if I move, hold on, let me just candles here. Okay. Do you see you're at a one, two, three, 
you're, you're at a top. And if I were to Google it, yesterday I did double top. It's a triple top. <laughs> it's just, it's the same thing. The triple top is a top of ch uh, chart pattern that is used in technical analysis to predict the reversal in a movement of an asset's price. And actually I had someone in the comment section because I read all of them and I even pin ones that are mean against me. And that is okay because it refines me. But someone was so confused about gold. You're like, so is it going up or down? And then I say both. <laughs> Like I believe gold will go higher in, in the coming years, 100% absolutely. But in the short term, see, I, we trade short term and I give you a macro look and we, we trade long term. What do you want to do? Do you just want to buy and hold? If you're just buy and holder, then just dollar cost average every single day. And then you don't have to listen to anyone. But uh, this guy, this cat, uh, I tuned in yesterday to see if J Jay Bravo was going to say he was wrong yesterday for predicting a bull run. I've never said a bull run. <laughs> I don't think I I don't think I would say a bull run. I'm not I'm not in the camp of a bull run. One candle closed above the 200. Yep. Yep, that's what I said yesterday. And and it's a swing, but if it drops below the Bravo 9, you exit. This is BS. I know you can't predict the market, but to ignore your technical and I, I then it keeps going. But here, I will show you again. So for all of you, this is the S&P 500. You cannot trade this because this is SPX. I should hop over the, I should just make this trade. <laughs> Gosh, put it on. But then I always have to go back. Okay, what are you doing with Tesla? It's still in the short. I'm still, you have a possible bear flag right here. It was an ascending, a, a rising wedge, but eh, it's more like a channel right now. Here, right there. See there, that red line. That's the, you know, I'll, I'll zoom in so you can see it, but be careful. Oh, this was my last entry. And that was my exit. Take profit. But here we go. Here, I'll draw. You got two things. Not good. Your your MACD, yes, it crossed, but it's it's like wonky. There's nothing like really hardcore in there like this. That's like a solid confirmation. This, yeah, wonk. All right. So anyways, beat down, right? Here's your 200-day moving average. That's this white line right here. See that, that white line that's going across? You're basically just kind of under it right now. Just under it. And the machines are fighting. Also, you're sitting on my Bravo 9. So you're basically sitting on both of them. On this one, you could have put in a buy. Now, some of you guys get religious and you're like, it wasn't a full candle. Right, I, I get it. I turn on a lot of indicators in the background that I don't even show on the channel, but I just try to keep it simple. That's your entry. If you close one candle below that red line, then you exit. This would be a small percentage loss. But if you really wanted to trade it, you'd head over to SPY you click that button and you click buy. Then you make sure it's limit and you have 26 minutes left to make that order. And then the market closes. And then you look at the price and you go, it's 390, 391.79, 391.71. Eh, let's see if I can make a bargain. And then I click buy, buy limit down there, order place. Ta-da! Also, if you want to do this with me, it's it, it's this easy. <laughs> you can connect to uh, trade station. They'll give you 150 bucks. That is not what they give me. They give me a lot less. I have them give you the 150 bucks and I, I take the pit. And also this entire thing that I use is trading view. So link in the description for that also. That's the system. I also have different brokerage accounts. You name it. I got Robinhood, Webull, uh, TD. Yep. Uh, Fidelity. If you want to know my favorite, it's it's right here. This is that's why I recommend it. Oh, also, uh, sixty percent off if you want to swing trade. Right? How do you close it? You want to know how you close it? You click that X right there, and you're done. You want to know when to close it? If it goes below that red line, okay, and you get a candle close, like any of those over there, that's like oop. But if it's a green day, you may want to wait. But hey, look, I'm up. See? That's, this is just, and it's sitting there right on the 200. And instead of $391, it could have been 3,090, right? Or 3 million. And I just wait for these swings all day long. I also have a Bravo's daily watch list. If you want to know exactly what I'm doing, that one's 29 bucks a month because I raised the price. The bear market one is still at 19. If you want to grab that, grab it. Oh, and just to let you know, you will never see a discount on that ever. I will never lower the price. And 30 bucks or 40 bucks or 20 bucks is ridiculously too cheap for me to put in that kind of work every single day of my life. 
Now, some of you have asked me, well, what about, uh, you, you got the bond market and then you have the corporate bond. You have so many debt. You have a huge debt base. It's like quadrillions. Do you own any of this mortgage debt? Well, besides what my bank buys with my money when I deposit it, the answer is no. Oh, and just to let you know, the commercial debt market is huge. Eight trillion. Anxiety strikes, huh? Wonder why. Uh, but we have a great, yeah, we have a great market. I don't know why anyone would be worried about $8 trillion in mortgage debt in the bond market after SVB collapse. And this will take down a little bank. And little banks are like, you want a car loan? You can have a car loan. You can have a car loan. That's all they do. They loan, they buy bonds, okay? I just say beat them to it. Investors fear other banks will sell mortgage-backed securities. That is something that they could buy. And then they buy it and the Fed's like, why don't you move that onto our balance sheet? It's like a little placeholder. And then everyone goes, Fed go bird. Nope, that's exactly what just happened. No, Bravo, but I just saw the Fed balance sheet. It, po it popped up. Now those are probably swaps. And that would be for a, an entirely different video. But let's head over to Stanley. Guys, I want his last name. Drunken Miller. Perfect. Stanley Drunken Miller. <laughs> that is what I want. We're going from bra Bravo, bra Drunken Bravo. <laughs> Stanley Drunken Miller fears a recession. I, I have been saying this. I even put a line in the sand in the S&P 500. I said everything that the Fed is doing, all of your PE ratios, all of the things, where does it catch up? I drew the line for you. Maybe I'll go back to it. But Stan says fears, fears a recession but isn't betting against stocks. Here's why. Well, I, that's a good idea. The only problem was, was that was last year. So that was probably not a good idea because the only one who made money in that market was, hey, hey, long dollar, which again, it was all in the charts. We had a big rising wedge and I then I showed you and I'm like, if it ever breaks like this blue line, but it was on the dollar, we're gonna go lower. And it broke one. I'm like, okay, that's your first warning shot. You may wanna either short it or get out. You break that blue line, which it broke that one too and off to the races to the downside. But let's see if I have my line on this one. I actually have it on SPX. It's what happens when you have just too many charts uh, right there. Uh, May the 1st, May, May the 4th be with you. So remember that because I know some of you as a teacher, I know, I know how to do this. So remember May the 4th, you're like, oh, this, so this is when that, the, all the PEs and, and what a company earns and, and all of this, that's when the, the chat hits the fan. So that's why I, I exit. There's, there's times where I, I enter and I exit. I'll, I'll never just be a bag holder. But also the main reason for that article uh, with Mr. Drunken Miller was a soft landing. Last year, and he's he's going to be correct on this one. I'll read what he, what he says. According to Bloomberg News, that it's possibly the first leg of the bear market has ended. Okay. <laughs> Check wrong. But I think it's highly, highly probable that the bear market has a ways to run. His rationale is simple enough. There has never been a soft landing when... Inflation has been above 4.5%. Never, not one time. And also you want to know another, not one time has the market ever found a bottom in a tightening cycle, which we are currently in. So there is your bottom, not your bottom, because you know where your bottom's at, but we have not found the bottom. The bottom is not in yet. Well, that is if we are in a tightening cycle, which... I just listened a couple days ago, we're currently in one. So, and they also have future, that's what they say. Now what they say and what they do, there is future rate hikes. So be very careful when you come over to these charts and you're like, buy and hold, we're going long. No, we're Bravo, but you bought, yes, but I'm gonna get out. And I do this every single day. I get in and I get out. I get into gold, silver, Bitcoin, bond, you name it. I'm always moving the digits based on the flow. Also, even though uh, Steven Van Meter will disagree with me, um, I say the stock market um, is not the economy. He says it is the economy. That's okay. I say it's not. the econ Here's your, you wanna see economy? Economy's in shambles. But, the, but then you're confused. You're like, the market went up. Huh, so weird. Because I, I trade them differently. The debt market, distressed debt pile surges, 66 billion just last week. 
right? Everyone's being called to the floor. What's, what's your hand? Well, I got no hand. Actually, I got no hands and I got no arms. Well, how are you playing this game then? So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's coming. Like the, all of the bad things that all of bad YouTubers talk about. It just takes time, okay? So when the meteorite smashes, you know, from a million miles up into the ocean, uh, it takes time for the tsunami. And I'm just saying, inverted yield curve, everything that I've been saying, it, it's taking time and it's just grinding away. Everyone's like, dang, I can't seem to make money in this market, but you are, unless you have not taken advantage of, again, start swing trading and then go into my bear market course and then do a watch list or do absolutely nothing, but that's okay. You've been warned and I will see you, uh, I'll see you tomorrow, huh? This weekend, Friday, huh, drinking day.